Hey guys, I'm just going to take you through this workflow of this photo that I took last week in the Lake District. I was there with my family camping for a few days and towards the end of the holiday it seemed to rain non-stop for like 36 hours. So eventually the clouds broke and I had to grab my camera gear and visit this location. Now this is the Duke of Portland boathouse at the top of Oldswater and I've passed it several times before but I've never actually captured a shot of the boathouse itself and I've really wanted to. With this being the last evening of the holiday and the only time that the clouds broke I just had to seize the opportunity so I grabbed my camera equipment and I headed straight down. As I said it was late in the evening so the light was fading so I had to take two exposures. I took one for the foreground and to get all the information in for the building and the mountains in the background and I took another exposure with a, a two or three stop ND filter just so I can get some of the colours and the textures from the clouds. So to blend these exposures, I'll hide the dark exposure first, select it, then I'll open Instamask and I'll try a Brights 2 mask. And that Brights 2 mask seems to work really well. We've got a nice selection of the sky, we've got the reflections in the water nicely selected as well. A little bit of a grey area here but we can just over paint there so it brings through the tones and the textures that we need. So with that mask still selected I'll press the select white button which will give me a selection of everything that appeared white in the mask. It will also apply a black mask to the dark layer and give us a brush tool with a white foreground selected. Make sure your opacity is up to 100% and the flow is also at 100%. Press Alt or Option on a Mac, right click and drag the cursor over to the right hand side to give you a really big brush and simply start painting over the sky. And this will bring through the sky from the darker layer. Again like I said because the bottom area of the mask was grey, if we paint over it several times it will eventually bring through all those colour tones from the darker exposure and blend the image really quite nicely. This tree has come through from the darker exposure as well so if I just lower the brush size and brush over that area a few times it will really pull all that information in from the branches and the leaves so it will give us a nice crisp blend. With all exposure blending there can be adverse effects such as halos, edging and things like that so if we take the magnifying glass let's zoom in to some of the obvious areas where we would find edging. And we've got a little bit on these branches, not a huge amount, not when you consider we're zoomed into 200%. And then if we scroll across, another area would be over here where the dark exposure meets the light exposure. And we can see a bit of edging on top of the hills. That's easily fixed. If you open up the filters and finish tab and click clean CA. This is the same tool that we use to clean chromatic aberration. It can also be used really effectively to clean edging and any kind of haloing. So I'm just going to reduce the radius down to about six because we only need to make a small adjustment on this edge. And then I'm going to open up Instamask again and I'm going to click on Edge M for Edge Mask. This is going to produce a mask where the edges of the image are all black. We can increase the contrast of these edges by moving the sliders and the level adjustments to make more contrast between the edge and the rest of the image. Add a slight Gaussian blur and hit OK. Select the black mask that's on Remove CA and click Apply. This will now apply the mask to the remove chromatic aberration layer but it's in the inverse so all you need to do is press ctrl or command and i and that will invert the mask and it will take away all the edging from the hills and all the edging from the trees and the branches so that's nice and clean seeing as we're cleaning the image we might as well take a look at some of these distractions that we can see in the foreground so we've got the lights here from the main road which is just outside the boathouse. So let's press Control, Alt, Shift and E or Command, Option, Shift and E on a Mac and then select the Patch Tool. Make sure that we have Content Away selected 
and just simply draw around the areas that you want to remove and drag them to where any obstructions don't appear. So we take out the lights in this reflection, we'll even take out that rock. There's a stick in the water here, we'll get rid of that. I'm not sure what this little white spot is, but we might as well remove it. We've also got some of the lights, like I say, from the main road. There's no need for them to be there. They're just All they're doing is, is giving our viewers and ourselves something else to look at. So that means less time to take in the scene and less time to appreciate the rest of the photograph. Even here, little breaks in the trees where you can see the roadside just poking through a little bit. Let's just hide that. We've got a little bit of the runway for the boathouse. Let's cover that up as well. Even things as simple as this blue stone that's in the house. It's different to all the other stones. So I, I don't know why, but let's get rid of it. And another area we can look at, we've got a lone fisherman here in the lake. And we've just got these rocks in the jetty that are stopping us kind of being close and more intimate with this fisherman. So let's just remove them. This is just a really nice and easy way of cleaning up the scene of your image. And the cleaner this can be, the more inviting it can be. There's less obstructions, so there's less things to look at, which means there's more time to focus on what's important in the image, such as the building and the fishermen, instead of all these little distractions. We have a look at the before. You can see all these items that are just to the side here, which do catch your eye, definitely. And then the after. And that's much better. That's much cleaner. But let's clean even further. Let's have a little bit of a deep clean. Uh, let's, let's have a look to see if there's any sensor dust. Now, I know there'll be a little bit of dust on this image because a couple of days earlier, I was trying to shoot when it was raining. And it's all, always difficult. You always pick up little bits of grit and dust in the air. So by pressing the reveal dust button, you can see these dark spots appear on your image. Now this is sensor dirt. So if we select the layer below that, make sure we have this box unticked for sample all layers because we just want to be working on the layer underneath. Draw on the dust spots and just drag them to areas that has a similar texture. Exactly the same as we did when we were removing the distractions earlier. And like the little lights and the rocks and the twigs. Just drag them to different places. There's even a light, a little light smudge down here. I don't know what that is, but let's get rid of it. Now when we hide the sensor layer, press Ctrl D to release any active selection. We can have a look at the layer again to see how well we've done. I think there's a little bit of an error up here. The colour tones or texture doesn't really match, so... Let's just fix that. That's much better. Now that we've cleaned up our image, so we've given the viewers more focus, let's give it even more emphasis on where we want the viewer to look. So let's have a look again at the filters and finish tab. And this time we're going to apply a manual vignette. Now vignettes are great and we've got some built-in ones in Raya Pro, which are absolutely fantastic and easy to apply to any image. As you can see, after pressing the manual vignette button, we have two layers. We have a bright layer and a dark layer. By selecting your brush tool and a white foreground, we've got the dark layer selected. Let's zoom out a little bit and get a brush tool. Let's paint over the area that we want to dark and that we want to take away from the viewer's attention. We can even use it to darken aspects of the image. So with this composition, we've got some really good leading lines. We've got the light from this corner. We've got light from this corner. We've got the line following the trees, which takes us into the center. And we've obviously got the building itself. Now, I think when I used that darken vignette, I've actually inadvertently painted over some of the reflection. So all I need to do is go back to a black brush. Let's go a little bit smaller. And let's take away the unwanted dark vignette that I've applied to the areas that I wanted to stay bright. Let's further emphasize that by selecting the bright layer, going back to a white brush, making it slightly large. Let's go 50% opacity. 
and let's paint over the areas that we do want to draw attention to. So we do want viewers to follow these lines. We do want them to go along the tree line. We do want them to end up in the center of the scene and we want them to look at the boathouse itself, which is one of the main features. To further enhance that, instead of just relying on the vignette, if you open up the dodge and burn panel and click on 50% gray, this will apply a dodge and burn layer, which can be used very similar to a, a vignette. When we paint on this layer in white, it'll brighten things. And when we paint on it in black, it'll darken them. So for instance, under this tree, we don't really want viewers to be looking under here. There's nothing of importance and it's a bit messy really. So if we just swap that over to a black brush, let's take this down to 10% because this can be a very powerful tool. And then just simply paint over the areas that you don't want the viewer to look at. So let's force the, the viewer's attention out of the dark and into the light. Let's paint these mountains. Let's make them darker on the edge, and lighter in the middle. So again, the viewer's attention is forced down into the center of the image and onto that lone fisherman. Adversely, let's select the white brush. And again, we've got 10%. I'm gonna bring the size down just ever so slightly. And I'm gonna paint over the highlights. So I'm gonna paint over the building as well especially the reflection that worked really well and into these trees. I'm going to paint over the top of this bush here but not underneath because the light won't really be getting to that area. It'll all stay hidden and shadowy underneath. The emphasis on the fisherman in the middle, let's make a really big brush and let's paint over that guy a couple of times just to make him the real focal point and the centre of this image. Another way that we can bring attention to areas in our image is by enhancing details. So again, if we open the filters and finish tab and click detail enhance. This acts like a frequency separation layer, but instead of keeping the color and the texture, it just gives us the texture layer. Now, because we don't want it to be too overpowering, we can reduce the radius and the threshold and then just click OK. We let Raya Pro do its thing, hide the filters and finish tab, and you can see that's incredibly over sharpened. I hope you can see that on your screen, but it's really, really powerful here. Far too powerful. So all you need to do is reduce the opacity of that layer. Let's say down to 50% or thereabouts. So we're on 53% and that's still a little bit overpowering. So we can go down to 30% and that's a bit better. Let's take it down even further, 23, 22. And let's hold down the Alt button or Option button and add a black mask to the layer. So it takes away the effect with the brush tool selected and a white brush, 50% opacity, and then just paint over the areas that we do want to bring attention back to, that we do want the details to be emphasized, such as the building and the trees. Again, let's toggle that on and off so we can see the before and the after, and that's really subtle. Let's bring that up ever so slightly and check it again, before and after. I think at 35% that works really well. The final thing that we're gonna do with this image is just warm it up slightly. We've got some mixed colors here. We've got some purple in the sky. We've got some really neutral tones. So a couple of things I'm going to do first of all, I'm going to try and match the tones in the sky and lay them over the building. So again, we'll open the dodge and burn panel and this time I'm going to select glow free. Next, I'm going to take my color sampler tool and I'm going to take a color from the sky to paint over the building to bring it more in tune with what's happening in the sky. So if you see there, I'm just painting over that ever so slightly and it's adding that purple tinge to the building. Let me reduce the brush size a little bit and just paint over these trees as well. I'm probably going to go 100% on these trees just to add that little hint of purple that will complement the sky and bring the scene together. Now finally, just going to warm the, the whole scene up 
by again using the panel in Raya Pro called the Color Center and I'm just going to add a warmer filter to the whole image. I'm going to boost that up a little bit. I think an extra 5% will make a massive difference and it absolutely has. So just with that warmer filter there we've brought in some more pinks, we've brought in a little bit of orange and a little bit of yellow and it's just really nicely finished off that sunset. I think the only thing we can do on top of this if we do really want to make those highlights pop just a little bit more is we can use a Orton effect. So if we go into Dodge and Burn, click Orton effect and again let Raya Pro do its thing. Let's reduce the radius pixels. I'm going to go for about 5.8. Click OK. And click OK again on the levels menu. I don't need to adjust that. I think it's just going to be used for the highlights. And because we're just using the highlights, let's open Instamask. And let's click on, let's say, Brights 3. Now that Brights 3 mask is really good. It, it is literally picking up all the highlights that we want to adjust. If anything, we can move the mid-tone slider up a little bit to make that a little bit brighter. Bring the shadow slider down a little bit more and that's perfect. So that's taking the Orton effect away from a lot of the mid-tones and a lot of the darker tones. It's absolutely brilliant. What we need to do first before we apply this is we can't apply an Instamask while it's in a folder. So we'll take the Orton effect and Instamask outside of the manual vignette folder. Then we can click on the Orton effect and then we can click apply. And that will then apply the mask to that layer and we can have a look at the before and after and it just gives those highlights just that little bit of a pop little bit of a mysterious glow so there you go guys we've gone from this bright exposure to introducing a dark exposure blending them all together adding some little finishing touches that are built into Raya Pro and I think we've created a really nice subtle and soft image of the Duke of Portland Boathouse. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you were able to pick up some nice quick hints and tips about how to use Raya Pro in your workflow. Look out for some more tutorials coming soon.